Well, hello there, everyone on YouTube. Uh, and I apologize, I've been gone for a little bit. Uh, I went on a road trip to try to get you guys an awesome new idea that I had, but it didn't work out too well. So I've been trying to think of n newer things I can do, something to help everybody out. Um, so what I'm going to do, since this is mainly what my channel has been about lately, is a Crown Vic P71 buyer's guide. So this will be, I mean, everything you could think of that I know, at least pretty much everything that I've kind of picked up along the way, year-to-year uh, -year changes, mechanical weak spots, years that you might want to watch out for, uh, and just a few tips on buying your own Crown Vic. So you might want to start and say, okay, well, why would you even want to buy one of these cars in the first place? Of course, the first argument that anyone's going to tell you is that it's cheap. They're cheap and they're everywhere. They're body on frame, um, and you really don't have that many rear wheel drive body on frame or body on frame cars, period. The 4.6 liter two valve modular V8 was actually a very uh, incredibly uh, reliable engine. Uh, it had a few known faults throughout the years, but uh, I mean, it, overall, it was a pretty darn good engine. Uh, of course, they're cheap to obtain and you have incredible value for money because you have a car that just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Uh, and it's kind of something that's unique because it's really the end of an era. Uh, I mean, there is not really anything else like the Crown Vicks out there anymore. So you have that going for you as well. Um, they're easy to maintain and they're great on the highway. So that's really what I can start with, honestly. Um, now, there are a few advantages of buying the P71 model over the civilian model. It does have slightly more power, probably right around 30 more horsepower. This is a highly debated issue. I mean, you, people say, okay, they only have 239. Some people say 250. I don't know. The modifier guide that I have says 250, but who knows. Um, it has oil transmission and power steering coolers. It's going to make your fluids last longer. They're not going to get as hot. The detergents and all the good things in them aren't going to break down from heat. Uh, it has a stainless steel dual exhaust without resonators, which sounds cool. Um, it's not a magna flow, of course, but it is what it is. Uh, it's got higher ground clearance. You can go over a curb at 40 miles an hour. The car is designed to do that, so not that you would want to, but hey, just in case. Uh, you know that uh, if you get run off the road, your car is not going to be destroyed. The transmission is supposedly tuned for more aggressive shifts, but I honestly, I couldn't tell you the difference. They're really sloppy either way. There are ways to fix that, like J-Mod. If you go uh, look a little bit of that up, it's kind of an involved thing. It involves removing springs and making things larger in the valve, but it's, it's, it's pretty involved. But depends on how much you want to do. Um, it does have severe duty shocks, but that doesn't really matter because by the time you or I get our hands on them, we're probably going to need new shocks anyway. Um, and you can get 3.27 or 3.55 open or locking differentials. So uh, that's something you're going to want to check when you uh, go to buy yours is what kind of diff you have and whether it's open or locking. There are a few disadvantages, um, and chiefly that one being because I have one, is never buy a white one because they will peel no matter what year. I mean, we're talking 98 and up, if I buy a white one, it will peel. And if you really want white, just be prepared to paint it because you will need to paint it. Um, there are always people that are going to just say, okay, well, you just have this car because you want to look like a cop. Okay, whatever, we've been through that road. You know, you guys can, can say that and People can accuse me of it. I don't care. I just enjoy the car. So, um, one last point is that a lot of them may have been heavily abused. You know, some of these patrol cars, they idle for hours and hours and hours, or may have been in several accidents. So just kind of make sure you look in the background as much as you can. So I'm gonna start off with year to year changes. Start with 98 and go through all the way through 2011. Uh, 98, of course, was the year that they came out with the body style until the end. They didn't change much at all. Um, 98 had chrome uh, chrome grille, chrome door handle trim, and trim around the rear tail lights was all chrome, and they were called Crown Victoria P71. Uh, 99 was the first year they started putting the police interceptor badges on them, and it was it coincidentally also the same year that the street appearance package came out. So. You can't have a street appearance package P71 that's going to look more like a civilian car. Uh, in 2000, the rear chrome was removed, 
uh, and 01 power pedals became available as an option and the honeycomb grill which is the one that I have and all the other ones after the 01s have if you have, don't have a street appearance package that is that's uh, when that was introduced 03 was a major year because they went from uh, the twin tube shocks from way 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 back in suspension land to the new inverted monotube shocks uh, the chassis was slightly redesigned, still the Panther platform, but it was redesigned with hydroformed steel. Uh, they replaced the recirculating ball steering with rack and pinion. Uh, the interior panels got a redesign, this newer design, less, less uh, wavy in 90s. Uh, the rear shocks were actually moved outboard, uh, so it would make them easier to service. Uh, and apparently it enhanced the handling somehow. Someone out there will tell me how that works. And of course, uh, new aluminum control arms up front. So, those are some significant changes for 2003, but 2004, even more changes came along with the Marauder Airbox. So the P71s now have Marauder parts on them, which is pretty cool. Uh, the 200 amp alternator was introduced in 2004. And the later build 04s come with the stronger and supposedly better 4R75W instead of the 4R70W. Mine has a 4R70W because it is an uh, earlier build 04 that was built in 03. Uh, so it's really easy to spot a 2005 because they have a rear whip antenna and that is the only year that they uh, had a rear whip antenna. So if you see one with the antenna on the back, and not integrated into the rear windshield, you know that's an 05. 05 also got the electronic throttle, so no more throttle cable. Uh, it got that new square steering wheel and the fire suppression system was added uh, because there were a few instances where people had things improperly loaded in the back of the car that would puncture the gas tank in a rear end collision and they would catch on fire. And I do believe they put an enhanced barrier between the trunk and the fuel tank after that whole thing came about. Uh, so 2006 you saw the new gauge cluster with the tachometer, uh, an hour meter, and the digital odometer, which was cool. And the 17 inch steel wheels were introduced for 06 that had to do with a recall for the 03 to 05, I'll go through that a little bit later. In 08 the Crown Vic went fleet only, so this is when civilian Crown Vic sales stopped. Uh, they did continue to make the regular Crown Vic and use them uh, to sell to rental fleets. But if you have a civilian one made after 08, it will have been a rental or a fleet or a police car at some point. And keyless entry as an option was added. I'm pretty sure that was mostly because of the Impala uh, came with keyless entry at the time, so they added it as an option on the Crown Vic. And 09 power pedals became standard, which was pretty cool. Side airbags became standard as well, and they added that silly flex fuel badge on the back of the car. Uh, in 2010, P71 was replaced with P7B. So if you're looking at a 2010 or newer and it has a P7B VIN code, you're not getting screwed with. Uh, that, that's what they changed the VIN code to after that. And the only last thing they changed was in 2011, they got larger headrests to comply with uh, safety standards. So, A final note uh, for the year-to-year -year changes is the 93 to 05 have the aluminum metal matrix drive shaft which was safe at and above 150 miles an hour. They changed it after that back to a standard drive shaft. Anyway, continuing on, uh, recalls in weak spots. Uh, the first one I can really think of is the plastic coolant crossover uh, in the early build 01 and older. Uh, they'll crack and leak after a while. Um, and, and this was fixed by replacing it with an aluminum part. I know mine actually had this problem and it was an 04. Um, but some of them will have that aluminum coolant crossover in the front of the engine uh, that was all plastic and of course hot cold, hot cold, hot cold. After a while it will crack and you'll get uh, coolant leaking into the valley between the cylinders. So something to look out for. Um, 03 and all the way back to 2000, I believe, um, the timing chain tensioner arms were changed um, to a cheaper material that was metal and then it was covered in nylon. I'm pretty sure the older ones were all metal. After a while is, is that at startup, 
Uh, you wouldn't have enough oil coverage on this part and after a while it would wear down because the chains would, would rub against it and not have enough lubrication. And after a while you'd wear down to the metal and you'd start to get this sewing machine sound on startup. And if it got really bad, it would be constant throughout what, whenever the engine was running. This is kind of a big thing because if, if these wear all the way through, uh, the engine can jump time and these are interference engines so just keep that in mind if you hear that. Um, the O3s were o and through O5s were recalled for a lighting control module. Uh, this can lead to uh, dim headlights, both headlights not working at all. Uh, and initially it was just an extended warranty thing uh, but now there actually has been a full recall. So if you go to look at one and uh, the headlights aren't working or they seem really dim or there's something weird with them, don't worry because it's most likely an LCM issue and that's now covered under warranty. Uh, the 05 to 11, if you may recall, were recalled for steering shafts uh, that would, the lower part would corrode, the lower joint would corrode and seize, causing the steering to be really, really hard or in some cases, total failure of the steering. Um, so this is something that's really important. Again, if you're going to look at one and the steering seems really stiff, uh, make sure you get it checked out uh, because this is covered under warranty. The O3 through the O5 were recalled um, because they had improper welds in the steel wheels that were allowing the air to suddenly escape all at once. Um, and, a, and a sign of, of you having the, the wheels that are affected by this is um, there was an excessive vibration at speed or nibble as they call it that was not solved uh, by balancing the wheels. So if you're balancing and rebalancing and rebalancing your wheels and you still can't seem to get rid of that, uh, make sure you look up your car and, and see if it's covered under this recall for the steel wheels. Uh, I don't know if it's an issue anymore, but I know that people were having trouble getting this covered by Ford because these vehicles are actually no longer in fleet service. So that's also something to consider. Um, 03 to 05 also, again, were recalled because there was some insulation above the catalytic converters that would sag and start to get hot and burn in some cases. Uh, again, these were recalled and it should have all been replaced, but it's something to look out for if you're looking at one. So when it comes around to buying your P71, again, I'll reiterate, you want to try and find out as much about the car as possible that you can. Uh, you want to check for any sign of these known defects, you know, the knock at the startup for the timing chain tensioners, uh, coolant leaks for the crossover passage, any of the hard steering, lighting issues, electrical things. I would, I would really stress that you test out the transmission as thoroughly as possible because that's going to be a real weak spot with these, with how they're generally used and treated. You know, make sure there's no slipping or slamming, make sure the fluid's at the proper level, it doesn't smell burnt. It's nice and in pink or at least some shade of red, not brown or, or black because that can really be a bad thing. So, you know, try to really scrutinize the transmission, make sure everything's working properly, get any service records you can uh, and, and really do a thorough inspection because that's going to be a big, huge weak spot that will cost you a lot of money if you have to rebuild or replace it. You want to make sure that you don't have that rattle upon startup because that's also quite an involved job and it can be catastrophic if it's gotten bad enough, but it rarely does. Um, you want to investigate the frame and the suspension for any signs of you know hitting curbs or or any significant bending. You know, check the Carfax, see if any any accidents show up. Carfax is not foolproof when it comes to accidents because cops don't always get called and it doesn't always get reported to Carfax. So do your own investigation. Get up underneath the car. Make sure everything's nice and straight and true. Another thing with, with these Crown Vicks is uh, all of the, the police equipment is generally put on by a third party. So you want to get in there and, and make sure that, you know, that there's not any improper electrical connections, anything that could be putting an un, undue strain on the electrical system. Uh, and the, generally these are things you can fix pretty easily, but there will be tangles and tangles of wires, especially if it's freshly off of the police department or wherever. If it's freshly been decontented, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you clean up the wiring and make sure that you're not getting ground faults and drains and all that good stuff. Um, you want to check for any, you know, of course, general used car stuff, play in the steering, odd squeaks and rattles. 
Another thing to say about these is that the body mounts commonly rot out. That's the mount between the frame and the body itself. There's a rubber bushing in there. After time, those kind of, they, they get pressed up and down, up and down, and of course it being rubber and it's hot, cold, hot, cold, they get cracked and they get old. It's a kind of a unique sound when you go over a speed bump. Right as the car comes up and then goes down, the rear wheels come up and down, you'll kind of hear a clunk. More likely than not, it's the body mounts. They're kind of a pain to replace. Uh, it's not something a state inspector is going to call you out on. It's really just kind of a noise that you might have to deal with unless it really bothers you. Other than that, uh, you know, general used car stuff. Get as many records as you can. Make sure you're getting a good price. Make sure that it's been treated as, as best as, as you can determine anyway. Um, and of course, check for any rust and corrosion. Do the, uh, do the test for the shocks, you know, push, push down on the car, see how many times it bounces back, that kind of thing. And don't be afraid to walk away from a Crown Vic if you don't like the condition of it. Don't, be, don't feel pressured because there's 10 million where that one came from. I think that's about all I have for right now. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, add anything that I may have missed in here, you know, Tell me in the comments, maybe I'll make a version 2.0, we'll kind of get this rolling, uh, get as many things included as possible so it's one place that you can go and say, okay, well I want to go buy this car, you know, kind of help to be a resource uh, to everyone else. So comment, like, subscribe, whatever, give me some feedback, uh, those of you that own Crown Vicks or have owned Crown Vicks in the past and, and know of some, some things that I may not have mentioned here. So. Thanks everybody and we'll see you soon.